If we now move on to the scapula, the scapula is connected to the sternum by way of the clavicle. And we can see here we have numerous views of our scapula. Here we've got a, a posterior view, here we've got a lateral view, the middle picture on this slide, and here we can see we've got an anterior view we can see here on this side of the screen. So let's look at some features of the clavicle. As I mentioned, it's a triangular, it's a flat bone, and it sits on the posterior lateral aspect of the thorax at the level of ribs two to seven. So it, it sits directly posterior to the rib cage at the level ribs two to seven. The posterior surface, which we can see here, is divided by this prominent ridge. This is known as the spine of the scapula. We can see it dilates into this large structure here known as the acromion. But the spine separates the posterior surface of the scapula into a supraspinous, so supraspinous above the spine, and infraspinous fossa. We have a supraspinous and infraspinous fossa. And these fossae are important in offering muscle attachments that work on the shoulder joint. And again, we'll look at these in more detail. So the posterior surface has this prominent spine, this ridge forming a supraspinous and infraspinous fossa. On the anterior surface, it's quite featureless really, but we just have a fossa again for subscapularis muscle. And this fossa is known as the subscapular fossa, which we can see here on this anterior surface. So the subscapularis muscle, which we will cover in a few lectures time, is sitting directly between the ribs and the scapula. So, some more features. We have what are known as angles on the scapula. We have three angles. We have a superior, an inferior, and a lateral angle. So let's just orientate ourselves. This is at the top on the posterior view, so we have our superior angle. The superior angle is connected to this inferior angle via this medial border. We can see this medial border of the scapula here. We've got a superior angle, this tip, and we've got an inferior angle here. And these two are connected by way of this medial border. We also have a lateral angle here, and that forms the three points of this triangle-shaped scapula. The superior angle is connected to the lateral angle by way of this superior border, and the lateral angle is connected to the inferior angle by way of this lateral border. So on the scapula, we have these three angles, superior, inferior, and lateral. And these are connected via borders, medial, lateral, and superior borders. And we can see these on the screen. Superior angle, inferior angle, lateral angle. Medial border, lateral border, superior border. And let's have a look at a few more features that we can see. First of all, on this lateral border, we can see here, we have a neck of the scapula. So this narrowing where the superior border and the lateral border begin to converge, we have a neck. And then we have a head, the head of the scapula. And this is characterized by a depression, which is known as the glenoid cavity. And that is going to articulate with the head of the humerus forming the shoulder joint or the glenohumeral joint. So we can see we've got the glenoid cavity here forming the head really and just medial to it we have the neck of the scapula along this lateral border. The superior border here we have an important feature and this is known as the suprascapular notch. The suprascapular notch is important as it allows a blood vessel to pass through the or over the top of the scapula and we'll come to that in due course in some later lectures. So here we can see various features which we can see on this posterior view. We can see if we look at the anterior view, we can again see we've got this neck of the scapula and we've got a head of the scapula forming the glenoid cavity and we can see the suprascapular notch. If we look at the spine, so let's just concentrate on the spine of the 
scapula. Now we can see it starting medially from this medial border and as it travels laterally it actually gets bigger and bigger until it forms this dilated bulge which is known as the acromion. And we can see this here on the posterior view. We can see it's prominently passing more laterally than the actual main body of the scapula and we can see the acromion here on this anterior view. And here on this lateral view, which is if you're looking from the lateral aspect, we can see we've got this um, costal surface. So this is the anterior surf here that's sitting against the ribs. And this is the posterior surface here. So we'd have skin along here. Here we can see the glenoid cavity and then radiating up here, we've got the acromion. We can see it's almost running completely over the glenoid cavity. And that's important as we'll come to realize because it can help to prevent superior dislocation of the humerus. So we've got the acromion. And remember in a few slides previously, we had the um, clavicular acromial um, ligament where attaches a ligament attaching from the acromion to the clavicle and we'll come back to that. So we've got the spine here of the scapula and it articulates with the clavicle. If we look at the head in a bit more detail then we've got the glenoid cavity. We can also see if we look clearly here at this lateral view here's the glenoid cavity. We can see we've got a supraglenoid and an infraglenoid tubercle. So small little elevations, little bony masses on the superior and inferior aspect of the glenoid cavity. And these are important for muscle attachments, as we'll see, both long head of biceps and triceps attached to the superior and infraglenoid tubercles, respectively. So here we've got the glenoid cavity and the supra and infraglenoid tubercles. We'll come back to these later on. The final feature I want to talk about is the coracoid process here. And this is an important kind of bulge again coming up from the superior border and from the head of the scapula. And this is the coracoid process. Again, it helps to form muscle attachments. We'll talk about coracobrachialis in a few slides time. And we can see here the coracoid process. Here again on the lateral view, we can see coracoid process. And here on this anterior view, we can see again the coracoid process. So some important features here on the scapula. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.